now. Hi, welcome to Unwind and Design. My name is Kimberly and I'm your instructor for today. So starting off with what we have in front of us, we have our 11 by 14 size canvas, long ways. We have our fan or our hair dryer, whatever you choose to use. If you have an outlet nearby, this helps your process go by a lot faster. So um, we are gonna be painting in layers. So because we're painting in layers, you wanna make sure that the back is dry fast enough so that we won't take so long painting, okay? So that's why we need a fan and our hair dryer. Next, we're gonna have our towel so we can dry our brushes, our water, um, and make sure that you have these brushes, okay? If you have some other brushes, if you're doing this in color pencil, in watercolor, it doesn't matter as long as you have the same shape of brushes, you can totally use that. So I'm losing a background brush, so something that's a little bit big and can help you out with that background. Next, we have our square brush and our round tip brush that comes to a point. And then we have our detail brush, okay, which is in the title. It's all the details. Okay, so next, the colors that we're going to be using today are going to be white, black, yellow, blue, red, and then the two extra green extra uh, colors we're going to be using are going to be green and fuchsia. If you don't have fuchsia, you can mix a little bit of blue and yellow into your red and you should get this color. It's kind of gonna, kind of like an orangey purple. I know it's kind of weird to define it, but that's how you make it if you don't have fuchsia. Okay, if you need me to explain it to you, I can give you the recipe on the chat bar so that you can make your own fuchsia. Okay, so we're gonna start off first. Um, taking into consideration that our paint is really sticky because it just came out of the bottle. We're gonna use our brush to add water to soften it up so that we can control the color better. So our brush is like a sponge. So immediately as you put it into that water, it's gonna suck up all that water. And that's what we're gonna use to soften up our paint, okay? So here, we are gonna pick up a good amount of water. We're not gonna tap it dry. Usually I would tap off my brush so that it would suck up the excess water. But this time we're just gonna come in and we're gonna bring that water and we're gonna blend it into the corner of our white. Very rarely do I like to use the center. Most of the time I like to paint right on the corner because they're usually while I'm painting, I wanna add some highlights and I don't want all my color to be mixed up. So it helps that you paint on the sides and you do your mixes on the sides of your palette to ensure that you have enough, enough color left over in case you wanna use it later. So we're gonna pick up a drop of this blue. Look at that, we're just picking up a little drop, okay? And we're gonna add that to our white. We're trying to make a sky blue color and we're trying to keep it very light. We're not trying to, to get it super dark here. Okay, so there we go, a little bit more white even a little bit more, scoop it in, blend it, make sure that you squeeze your bristles against the paint. So the little hairs on your brush, make sure that you squeeze those nice and soft. That's what mixes your paint, those little hairs. Okay, so it's what helps mix the paint. You squeeze it through your brush. Okay, and if it's too sticky, you come back and add a little bit of water. If you find that your paint is maybe, you're having a hard time spreading it, maybe you need more water. If you think that maybe it's too see-through, and um, it's not the way that you want it. Maybe it, you're having a little bit of a hard problem because it's going all over the place and you need a little bit more paint. Okay, so what we're gonna start doing first is we're gonna grab this brush and we are gonna try to make a circle, okay? So we're gonna place our circle a little bit on the corner. Okay, so we're gonna aim the corner on the right-hand side so the corner, it's gonna be the right, like the lower right half of your canvas, okay? There we go. You can choose to make your pineapple a little bit bigger too. It doesn't have to be the exact same size that I'm doing. Okay. And we're just gonna go in with this baby blue and we're gonna paint around this circle. Okay, you can come back with maybe even a little bit of white and try to mix that in there. So it's gonna be a baby blue with a white color in the background. And we're just gonna take that all around our canvas.
So we're gonna finish painting that background. Once you are done with that, we want to make sure that we blow dry our background. Just because we did our circle right now, that big white circle, doesn't mean that that's where we're gonna leave it. Once we dry this background up, I'm gonna go in there and we're gonna enlarge that circle a little bit. So don't feel pressured if you don't like the way the shape of your circle came out. Um, you're gonna go in there with a little bit of white and you are gonna um, paint over that just to make it a little bit bigger uh, when we come back. So I'm gonna put you guys on mute to not blow out your eardrums and I'll be right back. once I've allowed this to dry, I'm going to come in and I'm just going to pick up a little bit of my white and I'm going to start to work on my circle. I'm making it a little bit bigger. It has to come off to the side more to the right. So we are going to come in and with our white, we're going to add that white around to make our white slightly bigger. Okay. So again, when you're done with this section, we're just going to go back and dry it. If you're still working in the background, no pressure, take your time. I'm gonna be making my circle just a little bit wider. So if you notice, usually if you would do something like this or somebody would do something like this, um, we would kind of be hard on ourselves. We'd be like, oh no, it doesn't look the way I want or we would get a little upset. But this is a perfect um, thing for you guys to see I didn't get my circle the way I wanted it. Did I get upset? No. Um, did I get mad? No. So when you are painting something, I like to do kind of, or go by um, the words that Bob Ross went. I don't know if you guys know who he is. I talk about him all the time. Um, but I used to watch him growing up and he used to say that there was no such thing as mistakes, just happy little accidents in painting. So there is nothing that you can't fix when you're painting, nothing that you can't go over and edit, you can always go back and change things. And that's why painting is such an awesome medium to use because you can always change things. Okay, and then I just heard another one recently too where it says um, a mistake is just a problem that hasn't been solved yet. Okay, that doesn't mean that you can't find an answer to it. That doesn't mean that it's ruined forever. It just means that you haven't found an answer to it yet. But if you're patient and you work through it, eventually you'll find um, the answer that you want or you'll get the painting that you want. Okay. Now, hopefully this is nice and dry. So what we're going to be doing now is we're going to be painting in our pineapple. We're going to be grabbing our background brush or if you want to use your square brush your square brush is fine okay so we're going to be picking up our water adding that to our yellow and we're going to be adding some yellow into our pineapple so we're going to come in and begin to paint this in if you want to add just a little bit of white to it to make it brighter you can again it's up to you we are going to be having some white lines over the top so you don't necessarily have to add white if you don't want to. I like to add a little bit white um, specifically because I did go over the blue a little bit more so adding a little bit white will brighten up the color enough that it'll cover that a little bit more. We're coming in remember to pick up some water if you feel that your paint is scratching in the middle and it's not spreading evenly then you need a little bit more water in there. Coming back with a little bit more of that yellow. Okay, so come back with that yellow and continue to fill out this circle.
Okay, so while we're waiting for our pineapple to dry, we got add a little bit more white over here just so it'll be nice and covered. Okay, so while we're waiting for our pineapple to dry, we're gonna come in and grab our round tip brush, okay? So I'm putting away my brush, retiring it. I'm actually washing it a little bit as well. I'm washing it first, that way it's nice and clean, and then I'm picking up my round tip brush. So the color we're gonna be using for this is gonna be two different colors. We're picking up our green. Okay, and like I said, we're using two different colors. We're gonna be adding some water to our green and make sure that it's nice and soft. Okay, and we're picking up this green and we're gonna be adding some to our yellow section. So there we go, we're starting to get sort of like a lime green. There we go, we got a lime green color. Then next, we're gonna grab some of this lime green and we're gonna add it to our white. And now we have a lighter minty green color. See, so it's green with yellow and then green with white. And we get two separate green colors right there. We're gonna be starting in the back and we're gonna be making our leaves here. So we're picking up our darker green and our darker lime green, and we're gonna be starting off in the back. So we are gonna skip a little bit of space, like two fingers, and we're gonna do this back leaf right there with that dark green. Okay, so we are gonna be going back and forth with our colors just so you kind of expect me. Uh, when you see me doing, going back and forth between my colors, you kind of expect that you're not taken off guard by that. Okay, so if I wanted to be a little bit darker, I'm gonna add a little bit of the darker green that I didn't mix, and I'm gonna add a little bit of that darker green towards the bottom. See that? Now it looks like my leaf has some shadow. So what I do is I go over it very lightly and I release my pressure the more I get into the light green and that ensures that it gets a nice fade, okay? So that's our dark green. I'm gonna put that brush away and I'm gonna come in, not that brush, and I'm gonna clean off the color off of that brush and then I'm coming in with my green again and my white and this time I'm gonna make a leaf off the side of it. You see that? And this is gonna be a little bit invasive in that dark green section. So we're just gonna kind of paint over it a little bit. See, and when you scrub it, if it's still wet, it helps you create a nice shadow. Making this line, curving it the other direction. And there we go. Okay, we're going with that white green. Again, it was your lime green, which was green and yellow mixed with white. And that's how you start to get this very light green color. And this leaf is coming off of the side. Okay, so we have a dark leaf there and a lighter leaf here. Again, we're gonna come back with some of this lighter green again which is green and yellow and white. I'm gonna add a little bit of water to that just so that it lasts me enough or else I'm gonna have to go back and make the color over and over again. Okay, and from here, we're gonna have another leaf and this one's gonna go over that section as well. And this one is actually going to curve towards the middle. See, we're gonna bring a line across and then this one is gonna also curve that way. So our leaves are gonna be pointing this way and just a little bit off to our left so that we can write aloha over the top. Okay, so come in with your lighter green. We're gonna bring that brush. If you're having a hard time spreading your paint, add a little bit more water to your paint. That might be the problem.
So then I'm going to come back with my darker green now. Again, we're working with our green, so you don't really have to worry about washing off your brush so much. So I'm coming in with my darker green. And right here on the top, I'm going to do a little point. And this one is going to go straight towards the top. Okay, again, this is going to be a dark, a darker green. We want to add a little bit of the unmixed green in the bottom to create that fade that we created down there. There we go, coming back with a little bit of white. And thank you guys so much for joining this class. I'm always so happy to see when I see a lot of faces, especially a lot of friendly faces that I'm used to seeing. You know, I love seeing you guys come in and try these classes out and enjoy them with me because I'm enjoying them just as much as you guys are. I love to paint. So painting this along with you guys really just kind of helps me out too. You know, we're both enjoying our time, spending some time together. We can't be outside in the street, but we can paint together through here. You know, we get to hang out with people that we have stuff in common with, you know, you guys all like art and we're all here for the same reason. Okay, awesome. So we have our green here. Next, we're grabbing our lighter green again. So if you need to make more, mix your green and yellow and then mix it into your white. There we go. I made a little bit more. Okay. And now we're gonna go over here and we're gonna create another leaf that's coming from the back. Again, this one is gonna be merging a little bit this way, a little bit more. So we're gonna come out from the side and we're gonna create a little point right there. Again, we do wanna leave enough space for the Aloha to go over the top. Okay, we are gonna be writing over the top of our pineapple Aloha. Okay, since this one is a little bit behind this leaf, I'm gonna make it just a shade darker so that it appears to have some shadow back there. So I'm adding some darker green and see how adding the darker version of that same color just makes it look like there's a shadow. You don't even have to add black. If you're using a lime green, you can use a dark green and it'll look like a shadow. And it'll look way more natural than using black. In most pictures that you see, like realistic paintings, they don't really use black for shadows. If you're drawing like realistic skin or something, they tend to use blues and reds as shadows or purples instead of using black. You hardly see black used in the shadow. Okay, I'm coming back with a little bit more of that white and I'm gonna just make this one stand out a little bit more since it was over the top of it. Okay, I'm going to add a little bit of that white over here towards the left also. Just to make sure that it looks like there's a highlight there. We're just working that in a little bit at a time. Coming back in here with some of that dark green. All right, so then we have the top of our watermelon done. Next, we're gonna, watermelon, <laughs> pineapple. <laughs> All right, so we have the top of our pineapple done. I'm gonna be grabbing my red now. Same brush, washing it off, and we're gonna start to create our flowers. So we're gonna start off first with our red. If you feel that your red is a little bit too bright, you can go in and add just a drop of black and you'll get a deeper, more black cherry type of red. It's a really pretty color. I added just a little bit of black to it because I love that color. And we're gonna be picking up a little bit more black. 
There we go. And we're making our red there. So the way that we're gonna make these flowers, we're gonna start off first with one up here and another one down here, okay? So again, we're doing a flower up here and another one down here. Let me zoom in so you can see it a little bit better. So we are starting on the bottom flower right over here. Okay, so this is my circle and I'm doing it on the bottom half. That's where I'm doing my flower. We're gonna start off first. Let's start off at the end over there. So we're coming in on a point and we're gonna make it bigger and bigger. You see that? That's one petal. Next, we're making another point and we're making it bigger on the sides and bigger on the sides. See that, how pretty it's looking? And we're gonna to continue to do that around. We're coming to a point and then I'm making it bigger on the sides and bigger on the sides. Okay, we're gonna do another point over here next to it. It's a total of like five of them. And then we're gonna go big on the side and big on the side. Same in the top, we're gonna to make it a little bit bigger more on this side and more on this side. Okay, and we have one flower right there. There we go. So then right above that, we're gonna put another flower. This one's gonna be a little bit higher up. Let me zoom out once. There we go. And we're gonna do another little flower over here and they're kind of surrounding, they're kind of surrounding the pineapple. Okay, so again, it's a point and then we're pressing on one side and we're pressing the other, bringing it to the middle. Okay, do another one on the side, making a little line so that there's a point and then I'm pressing and I'm bringing to the middle. Same thing here, making a line, and then I'm pressing, and I'm pressing. And we're gonna bring that all around. After we are done with this one, we're gonna move down and we're gonna do another little flower in the bottom right hand corner. I do have some of my plain red left over only because um, I mixed some black into my red. So I still have some of my plain red in there and I'm using that to go in here and add a highlight with that brighter red. Okay, so when you kind of take a look at that, you can see that red standing out a little bit. After we do our flowers and we use that red, we're gonna pick up some of our fuchsia. If you wanna add a little bit of white to your fuchsia or if you wanna leave it that color, 
nice and dark, you can totally use that. And we're gonna apply a little bit of that fuchsia towards the bottom of our flowers, just so that we can add a variety of color. I'm gonna add a little bit of white to my fuchsia. You can also use like a pink color. Okay, so I used a little bit of that fuchsia in the middle, going out from the center towards the outside. Okay. okay if it looks a little weird, don't worry. We are going to be using our black afterwards to straighten this out a little bit. We are going to be adding some outlines with our black. All right, guys. So hopefully you guys are a little bit more ahead now. We are going to be using our detail brush and we're going to be painting in our highlights. So we're gonna be using our white mix. So we're gonna to remember to bring some water in. We're gonna mix it in with our white, making sure that it is nice and smooth and ready to use. There we go. Make sure that you don't have too much water in your brush. And we're gonna start off first just adding a little bit of an outline on our flowers, okay? So we're gonna go right across, let me actually take some of this water off because I think there might be too much water. There we go. So we're going to come in. We're going to make a line up down our flowers and we're just going to go off to the side a little bit. If you want to do it on the other side, you can too. Okay. And we're going to do that to all these flowers. So we're coming in here again, making a line and we're making a line across. Again, we're making a line down. And we're adding that sideways line. If you want to add another little highlight, you can. Again, you don't have to. And we're going to do that with all of these flowers. A line on the top and on the side. Just to make it look like it's standing out a little bit more. Okay, and we're going to do the same thing to every single one of them lined down. Line to the sides. Okay, I'm gonna give you guys about three or four minutes to do this, and then we will be moving on. We are going to continue to do these lines all across our flowers. Grabbing our round tip brush that's a little bit bigger. We're going to grab our water and we're still going to play with our white, except that now we're using this bigger brush. So I'm grabbing in some of this white and we're going to start to create some lines. We're going to start off in the corner and we're going to curve it a little bit. Okay, our lines are going to curve from the bottom of our left side towards the top, and then we're gonna do it the opposite way, from the top of the left side towards the bottom, okay? And they are always gonna be curved like our circle, so it looks more three-dimensional. Okay, we're gonna skip a little bit of space. We're making our line nice and thick. It doesn't have to be completely um, smooth if you wanna leave it a little scratchy for texture, for character, that you guys can totally go ahead and do that. Okay, remember to curve it towards the bottom. Okay, we're gonna do the same thing over here. And there we go. I'm going to do another one towards the bottom. See that? Next, we're going to come from the top of the leaf and we're just going to curve it down. And we're going to continue to do that from the top left, curving it down. See how we're starting to get that pineapple look there? Again, remember to curve it. Okay, we're gonna do it again. 
towards the bottom. Again, remember to curve those lines and then bring them down. That's going to give you a more three-dimensional look on your pineapple. Okay. We're going to do it one more time towards the bottom. There we go. Next, we're going to grab that same white and we're just going to do a little bit of a highlight. Right there on the left hand side, we're going to do the same thing over here and the top. And this is going to allow us to create a little bit more of a highlight and give our leaves a little bit more character. Okay, if you want to grab a little bit of white with yellow you can leave a highlight on the back of your leaves as well. Again, just a little bit of white with yellow. We don't want to add too much. Again, we do want to see part of that shadow towards the bottom. There we go. Once we are done with our white, We're going to grab our detail brush and we're going to begin to do the eyes. We're adding some water to our brush and we're going to dip it into our block. We're trying to make our block nice and soft. Okay, so again, pick up some of that water, mix it in with your block. And we're going to do our eyes on the lower half of the face. So we're going to come in. Let's do our mouth first. So let's go right in the middle. Okay, cut it right in half. And right in the middle, that's where we're going to do the mouth. Okay, so that's right across. And the mouth is going to be a little line. And then we're just going to arch the bottom. And there is our little mouth. It's a happy mouth. It's like, yay, you guys painted me. Thank you. It's like summer. Okay. So next to this, we're just going to go a little bit towards the top and towards the side over here. Kind of a little bit higher. We're going to just do our little circles for our eyes. Okay, here's one circle for one of the eyes. And right across, we're going to come in and do another circle. So while we're waiting for that to dry, we're going to come in and we're going to begin to outline our pineapple and then our flowers, okay? So we're coming in with our black and we're just going to go around all of our pineapple and around our flowers. So that's what we're going to be doing. We're going to be outlining the whole thing.
our black is going to be a little bit thick. We do want it to be that way just so that we can uh, create a nice thick outline. If you want to straighten it up, if you want to make it a little bit thinner and thicker on one side, it is just a nice thick uh, outline. So I'm going to go around and again, I'm outlining everything, every leaf and the outsides of my flowers. Okay, so first I'm going to do my leaves and then I'm going to demonstrate how I'm going to do the flowers for you guys. Okay, so we're coming in. This circle is going up towards this way, and then this little leaf is actually going to go over it. There we go. Okay, so we're grabbing this leaf, and again, we're going over every single leaf as well. So after we have done our outline on our green area, after we've done it around our pineapple, we are gonna start to do our flowers. So our flowers are also gonna be outlined around. Okay, so we're gonna come in, we're gonna create that point. We're gonna come down. And then in the center, they're all going to touch, okay? So that's the trick with these. In the center, they're all going to touch. Let me go back. And we're from the middle, we're gonna create these lines that are gonna sort of touch the white lines that we made in the middle. See that? Then off the center, we are gonna be doing some thick lines coming out. And that's gonna be our pollen for these flowers, okay? So it's a little bit thicker on the outside. And then it gets thinner as we go in towards the center. And then we're gonna go and around the sides, just apply some black dots with that detail brush. Okay, this one happens to have two. The other two flowers, I believe, only have one. Okay, so again, go in there, make sure that your paint is nice and soft, that you added enough water in there so that you can use it. Okay, and we're picking up that black, and we're gonna continue to outline the rest of our flowers.
Awesome. So by now, hopefully we are done with our flowers. We're going to come in with a little bit of red and we're going to be adding our tongue in the bottom of the mouth. So we're using our detail brush. And with our red, we're just going to paint in a little almond shape in the bottom of the mouth. So we're making an arch and we're just going to paint that in with some red. Then I'm going to grab just a little bit of water of white and I'm going to do a little line over the top so that it looks like there's a highlight in there. Next, I'm washing off my detail brush and I'm going to pick up my white and I'm going to add two drops, one on the right eye and one on the left eye for where our little pupil is going to be your highlight of our little cutesy aloha pineapple is going to be at. There we go. Next, when we are done with this, you can grab a pencil or you can freehand it depending on how comfortable you are. And we're going to turn our, uh, our canvas in a corner and we're going to write aloha. We're going to start off over here and we're going to end about the end at the end over here. So we're going to start at the lower left corner and we're going to write up towards the right top corner. Okay, so let's start up a little bit low. Ooh. You have to make sure that you don't put your hands on any of this paint if your paint is still nice and wet. So let's start off. I'm going to start off a little bit low and then I'm going to curve mine. So I'm going to do my A. It starts off from the outside. A little bit thicker on the left hand side. A low. Okay, it's always thicker towards the left. Low. Okay, we're going to bring our H all the way around. There we go. Again, make that nice and thick. And then we're just going to bring in the H. And we're going to have the A go down and around right there and just continue off the side of the page. Okay. So after you write aloha down, then you're going to come in with your round tip or your detail brush. I'm going to use my detail brush and we're going to use our black to make that. So again, I'm picking up my detail brush. I'm adding some water into my black to make it nice and ready for me to just pick it up and use it. Okay, so I'm adding enough water in there for it to get really soft. I am going to put this little thing that I have for my hand over the top of it, just so that I don't risk writing on top of any of that. Okay, so I have my palette on my hand. And we are going to start off. Okay, so when you want a thinner line, you press a little lighter. When you want a thicker line, you press a little harder. Okay, so that's the trick for using your brush to get different size strokes with one single brush. It's all your pressure. And we're just going to write that word all the way down.
And with that, guys, we are coming to a close. Our final thing to come in and draw is to pick up our black or whatever color you show shoes to use. And on the right hand corner, we're just going to come in and do our signature or our initials of our name. Every artist signs their piece. So make sure that you guys are no exceptions. So when people see your masterpiece, they know that you're the one that did it. And there we go. Thank you so much for joining me. Make sure you check out our classes on our website and subscribe to our website. If you're on YouTube, please like our video and subscribe as well. Thank you so much. See you soon.